On People's War by the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, 1969. Conventional war is the war of the bourgeoisie. Revolutionary war is people's war. The Arab bourgeoisie has developed armies which are not prepared to sacrifice their own interest or to risk their privileges. Arab militarism has become an apparatus for oppressing revolutionary socialist movements within the Arab states, while at the same time it claims to be staunchly anti-imperialist. Under the guise of the national question, the bourgeoisie has used its armies to strengthen its bureaucratic power over the masses and to, vel to prevent the workers and peasants from acquiring political power. So far, it has demanded the help of the workers and peasants without organizing them or without developing a pro proletarian ideology. The national bourgeoisie usually comes to power through military coups and without any activity on the part of the masses, as soon as it has captured power, it reinforces its bureaucratic position. Through widespread application of terror, it is able to talk about revolution, while at the same time it suppresses all the revolutionary movements and arrests everyone that tries to advocate revolutionary action. The Arab bourgeoisie has used the question of Palestine to divert the Arab masses from realizing their own interests and from their own domestic problems. The bourgeoisie always concentrated hopes on a victory outside the state's boundaries in Palestine, and in this way they were able to preserve their class interests and their bureaucratic positions. The War of June 1967 disproved the bourgeois theory of conventional war. The best interest for Israel is to strike rapidly. The enemy is not able to mobilize its armies for a long period of time because this would intensify its economic crisis. It gets complete support from US imperialism and for these reasons it needs quick wars. Therefore, for our poor people the best strategy in the long run is a people's war. Our people must overcome their weaknesses and exploit the weaknesses of the enemy by mobilizing the Palestinian and Arab peoples. The weakening of imperialism and Zionism in the Arab world demands revolutionary war as the means to confront them. Guerrilla strategy as a form of pressure for the peaceful solution. The Palestinian struggle is a part of the whole Arab liberation movement and of the world liberation movement. The Arab bourgeoisie and world imperialism is trying to impose a peaceful solution on this Palestinian problem, but this suggestion merely promotes the interests of imperialism and of Zionism. Doubt in the efficacy of people's war as a means of liberation and the preservation of the relations of the Arab bourgeoisie with the imperialist world market. The Arab bourgeoisie is afraid of being isolated from this market and of losing its role as a mediator of world capitalism. That is why the Arab oil-producing countries broke off the boycott against the West, instituted during the June War, and for this reason McNamara, as head of the World Bank, was ready to offer credits to them. When the Arab bourgeoisie strive for a peaceful solution, they are in fact striving for the profit which they can get from their role as mediator between the imperialist market and the internal market. The Arab bourgeoisie are not yet opposed to the activity of the guerrillas, and sometimes they even help them. But this is because the presence of the guerrillas is a means of pressure for a peaceful solution. As long as the guerrillas don't have a clear class affiliation and a clear political stand, they are unable to resist the implication of such a peaceful solution. But the conflict between the guerrillas and those who strive for a peaceful solution is unavoidable. Therefore, the guerrilla must take steps to transform their actions into a people's war with clear goals. No revolutionary war without a revolutionary theory. The basic weakness of the guerrilla movements is the absence of a revolutionary ideology which could illuminate the horizons of the Palestinian fighters and would incarnate the stages of a militant political program. Without a revolutionary ideology, the national struggle will remain imprisoned and immediate 
and within its immediate practical and material needs. The Arab bourgeoisie is quite prepared for a limited satisfaction of the needs of the national struggle, as long as it respects the limits of that, the, that the bourgeoisie sets. A clear illustration of this is the material help that Saudi Arabia offers Fatah, while Fatah declares that she will not interfere in the internal affairs of any Arab countries. Since most guerrilla movements have no ideological weapons, the Arab bourgeoisie can decide their fate. Therefore, the struggle of the Palestinian people must be supported by the workers and peasants who will fight against any form of domination by imperialism, Zionism or the Arab bourgeoisie. The war of liberation is a class war guided by a revolutionary ideology. We must not be satisfied with ignoring the problems of our struggle, saying that our struggle is a national one and not a class struggle. The national struggle reflects the class struggle. The national struggle is a struggle for land and those who struggle for it are the peasants who are driven away from their land. The bourgeoisie is always ready to lead such a movement, hoping to gain control of the internal market. If the bourgeoisie succeeds in bringing the national movement under its control, which strengthens its position, it can leave the mo lead the movement under the guise of a peaceful solution into compromise with imperialism and Zionism. Therefore, the fact that the liberation struggle is mainly a class struggle, emphasizing the necessity for the workers and peasants to play a leading role in the national liberation movement. If the small bourgeoisie take the leading role, the national revolution will fall as a victim of the class interests of this leadership. It is a great mistake to start by saying that the Zionist challenge demands national unity for this shows that one does not understand the real class structure of Zionism. The, the, structure against, the struggle against Israel is first of all a class struggle. Therefore, the oppressed class is the only class which is able to face a confrontation with Zionism. The main field of our revolution struggle is Palestine. The decisive battle must be in Palestine. The armed people struggle to Palestine can help itself with the simplest weapons in order to ruin the economies and the war machinery of their Zionist enemy. The moving of the people struggle into Palestine depends on agitating and organizing the masses, more than depending on border actions in the Jordan Valley, although these actions are of importance for the struggle in Palestine. When guerrilla organizations begin their actions in occupied territories, they were faced by a brutal military repression by the armed forces of Zionism. Because these organizations had no revolutionary ideology and so no program, they gave in to demands of self-preservation and retreated to Eastern Jordan. All their activity turned into border actions this presence of the guerrilla organizations in Jordan enables the Jordanian bourgeoisie and their secret agents to crush these organizations when they are no longer useful as pressure for a peaceful solution. Revolution in both banks of the Jordan We must not neglect the struggle in East Jordan for this land is connected with Palestine more than with other Arab countries. The problem of the revolution in Palestine is dialectically connected with the problem of revolution in Jordan. A chain of plots between the Jordanian monarchy, imperialism and Zionism have proved this connection. The struggle in East Jordan must take the correct path, that of class struggle. The Palestinian struggle must not be used as a means of propping up the Jordanian monarchy. Under the mask of national unity, the main problem in Jordan is the creation of a Marxist-Leninist party with a clear action program, according to which it can organize the masses and enable them to carry out the national and class struggle. The harmony of the struggle in the two regions must be realized through coordinating organs whose task it will be to guarantee reserves inside Palestine and to mobilize the peasants and soldiers in the border territory. This is the only way in which a man can become an Arab Hanoi, 
a base for revolutionaries fighting inside Palestine. <laughs>